My fellow Montreatians, residents, and friends of Montreat, I extend warm greetings to all of you. I hope you're all well and safe and enjoying life for what it's worth. Together, we give God thanks. Sadly, last week, Montreat recorded its first COVID-19 death. I take this opportunity on behalf of the government and people of Montserrat to express our deepest sympathy to the family and friends of the deceased. I pray that the God we serve would comfort them in this dear time of bereavement. Today, I wish to recognize a number of groups who have given their time and effort in serving this country during this crisis. I applaud the men and women in uniform, members of the Royal Montserrat Police Service, the Montserrat Fire Search and Rescue, the Royal Montserrat Defense Force, and the Montserrat Red Cross. I show appreciation also to the many public servants who, in spite of the lockdown and other measures taken by the government, continue to avail themselves to the service of our people and this land. To our utility service providers and the many private sector businesses who never hesitated to open their doors to the public when called upon to do so, sometimes at very short notice. Thank you very much. To all frontline workers who have been caring for the sick, including our COVID-19 patients, whether in their government facilities or at home, whatever role you are playing, we certainly appreciate your contribution. During last week, the government of Montreal received a gift from the government of Dominica. The Honorable Ruth Red Carrot has donated two ventilators and a thousand rapid test kits to the people of Montreal to assist us in our fight against the coronavirus. The Ministry of Health accepts this gift with gratitude. And on behalf of the people of Montreal, I wish to express our thanks to the Prime Minister for his generous contribution. The Social Service Department continues to deliver food packages to persons who requested them. And to date, 718 food packages have been distributed. Household and self-employed persons benefits. In the meantime, the department has assured me that they are doing everything within their powers to enable payments to be made in line with COVID-19 assistance to household and self-employed persons. It is the government's desire to have all these monies paid out as early as possible. But we do understand that having received applications, a system for payment must be implemented to facilitate such payments. This, I'm assured, is nearing completion, and very shortly persons should be receiving cash allowances. If you have not as yet registered for any of the benefit packages, please do so by calling the Social Services Department at 491-2880, 491-5307, or 495-7491 between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4 p.m. If you have contacted them already, there is no need to call again. I've also been advised that checks for persons in the tourism sector have already been prepared and should be deposited to your bank account. If you have applied and you have not yet received your checks, please be patient. It will be coming. The application process is still open for employers of other businesses to apply for salary support for the employees. Please take the time to fill out the application form and return to the Ministry of Finance via email by Friday, May 8th, 2020. Remember, you can only receive these benefits by applying. Today, I am pleased to report, as I did last week, 
that the island has not recorded any new cases of coronavirus disease since April 12th. As of this morning, April 29th, two persons have fully recovered. Seven cases are still active. 32 persons are in quarantine, and the result of three samples are pending. Sometime today, we should receive the results of those three pending samples. And if they return negative, that will be additional good news for us. The signs are showing that the country has been moving in the right direction in curtailing the spread of the virus. But may I remind us that we are in no way near the end of this pandemic. The science tells us that countries can expect a second wave, which could even be worse. Your government will take the advice of the health professionals and act accordingly. The government's ambition is to be in a position to undertake island-wide testing for the virus. For this to become a reality, it is absolutely imperative that we equip the health team with the required resources. To this end, I have been informed that a testing machine should be on its way, along with some testing kits. Once they arrive and the relevant training has been completed, the country will be in a better position to track, trace, and test for COVID-19. It is only through a wider testing regime will we be able to identify persons who may be asymptomatic and trace their contacts and reduce the spread of the virus. But even then, some of the actions which your government would like to take to free up its economy would partly depend on actions taken by some of our neighbors. Clearly, everyone wants to get back to work. All of us wants to be able to visit our favorite restaurants and spend time with the families and friends. Some are longing to go to the hairdresser and barber shop, like myself. But the time is not quite right. We will get there, but it will take some time. Residents and friends, we are now coming close to the end of our second full seven-day, 24-hour lockdown. I understand your pain. I feel it as well, and appreciate the discipline and patience which you have exhibited during the past six weeks as government introduced measures to reduce the spread of COVID-19 among the population. I know it is not easy, but I wish to assure you, however, that I am in this with you, and your government is in this with you as well and we will all come out of this together. Today, I wish to report that while government's priority is to protect the health of the population, it is also important at this time that some attention be given to reviving some aspects of our economy. The order which is now in place will provide for total lockdown without exceptions. That was the order in which we are in now. This will be amended as an interim order as government seeks to identify and expand on the list of businesses and services it would allow operating. To this end, as of Friday 1st May, 12 a.m. to Thursday 7th May at 12 a.m., the following measures will be in place. Banks will be open from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. daily. Gas stations from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Bakery from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Grocery stores, wholesale businesses, agricultural produce businesses from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m money transfer businesses from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. A business connected with fisheries at a time approved by the Minister of Health will be allowed to operate. Water, electricity, telecommunications, or internet service providers may open from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
to receive bill payments. During the period 1st May to 7th May 2020, a person may leave home during the curfew hours to shop for necessities to include food, medicine, fuel, or other necessities. They may leave home to conduct banking transactions, to engage in an activity to include running, walking, swimming, alone, or with other members of the same household each day. These exercise activities must be done during the hours of 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. daily, remaining at all times within a distance of one mile from your home. And please do not use motor vehicles for the purpose of exercising, as this will not be allowed. Persons can attend funerals, and funerals may be conducted during this period. The gathering for the purpose of funeral is a maximum of 15 persons, to include the officiating pastor, the funeral directors and assistants, and other persons. During this period, social distancing must be adhered to at all times. An establishment must be placed social distancing markers inside and outside the establishment. While shopping, customers are encouraged to protect themselves by wearing masks in crowded areas and also walk with an umbrella and water when leaving home. The number of customers inside of any business establishment must maintain a distance of six feet from each other the number of persons allowed to gather in a public place remains at four. Phase one of the phase reopening of the economy will begin sometime next week. This present measure is an interim one until Friday, May 8th. At this time, additional measures and businesses will be added in what will be phase one of the reopening of the economy. Today, we have reached out to a number of stakeholders and have received some positive feedback. We thank every one of them for their valuable contributions and wish to assure them that we will use the information received as we proceed with a phased approach to opening up the economy. Consideration will be given to areas such as landscaping, pool services, hardware stores, sun mining, and some type, some type of construction activities with control on the number of persons among the COVID health and safety provisions. We are on the right track and we want to remain that way. So let us work together to manage COVID-19 while at the same time restore hope to our people. May God bless us all.